Um, all right, well, cool. I think we're right on time, so we'll go ahead and get kicked off. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Jay Young. I'm with Rock Technologies, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the five W's and the one H of a cloud migration. So we call it the Cloud Readiness Bootcamp. Um, and so really this presentation, this isn't designed to convince you to go to the cloud or, you know, I'm not trying to sell, give you a sales pitch on going to the cloud, but really this is designed for if you have thought about taking your JS to the cloud or if it's a consideration, these are some things you might want to think about because this is all we do. At Rock, um, and I'll talk a little bit about Rock in here in a moment, but our sole focus is taking ArcGIS Enterprise to the cloud. So uh, no matter what, if you're a huge setup or a small, tiny little municipality or a big Fortune 100 company, that's what we do. So we take all of it to the cloud. So um, a little bit, uh, talk about the agenda. So uh, go a little bit more detail about who and what and what and why you should listen to Rock. Who is Rock? What do we do? Talk about the five W's in that one H. So looking at the five W's, first we're going to look at the why. You know, what, why would anyone want to go to the cloud in the first place? I know the clouds had a lot of uh, witchcraft associated with it when it first came out years ago, but the cloud is a different, it's a different, um, it's a different beast, a good beast, but it's, it's beneficial. There's a lot of benefits going to the cloud. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Who, who's going to want to be involved in this journey? Um, this is a really big one. All of these are really important, but who is a very key one? And I'll explain a little bit more detail. Uh, what are you going to migrate? So if you've gone down this path and you've evaluated the cloud, you might want to consider, okay, we know we want to go to the cloud, but what do we want to take to the cloud? Um, including any content, you know, whether it's portal content, you know, uh, historical data, imagery, all of that, things to think about and to consider. So where? So there's a handful of cloud providers out there. So we'll look at some of those that are out there, what um, you know, some of the options, what you might want to consider when making these evaluations. When? A big one. Budget and timing are key with this. So we've talked with organizations that it's taken two years. You know, from start, they, the infant, you know, infant stages of that evaluation until they officially go live, sometimes it can take years. And that's not, that's fine. Sometimes that's just the way it goes. But um, and then last, how? How to get started on this. So uh, once again, not trying to sales pitch and get it to go to the cloud, got to, this is really designed to let you know if you're thinking about it and this is on the table, here's what we should think about. All right, so a little bit about us. So um, Rock, so wh why, why am I up here? Who is Rock? What do, we, what do we do? So our sole focus, once again, is taking ArcGIS Enterprise to the cloud. We've been around since 1997, um, mostly just small GIS applications in the 90s and the early 2000s. About eight years ago, we pivoted our business model to focus solely on the cloud. There's a huge need for it. Um, and so that's really all we do. Actually, that is all we do now is just take uh, ArcGIS Enterprise Suite to the cloud. And sometimes it's a hybrid. It's enterprise um, mixed with ArcGIS Online, mixed with a few other bits and pieces. but. Uh, so we have over 150 customers and 10 verticals, and that range is we have massive clients to the small municipalities. And honestly, when it comes down to it, GIS is GIS. Their needs are all the same, to be honest. It's a different scale of need, but it's, the needs are there. They're very similar. Um, and so we are, uh, as Re Gold business partner, uh, one of our more recent uh, accolades is we are the first, I think the only, at the moment, um, uh, Kubernetes specialist, or Esri ArcGIS Enterprise Kubernetes specialist. So that's kind of cool. Um, uh, and we are a gold, once again, a gold partner. We're, we are partners with Microsoft Azure and AWS. So technically cloud agnostic, since we do work with both. Um, I'll dive in a little bit more detail about what some of the nuances are between those two and some of the others. But um, so first off, why? So why would anyone want to consider going to the cloud? And there are many benefits, as I mentioned. Um, you know, the cloud offers, uh, what it offers today differs drastically what it could have offered years ago, you know, 10 years ago. Once again, there was a lot of concern and I call it witchcraft around the, the, the idea of going to the cloud. IT got very nervous about it because of security concerns. Well, now the cloud is the most secure 
environment you can be in. It is more, con more secure than anything you could have on premise. Uh, you know, the big dogs like Microsoft and AWS, they invest hundreds of millions of dollars to make sure they provide the best, um, which is good. So you can sleep well at night knowing that what they're putting, they're backing up what they're providing. Um, scalability, you know, having that ability to, as your GIS grows, can your infrastructure grow? If everything is on premise, um, it, so a lot of organizations, everyone's different, but you may have to budget for, you know, your budget accounts for you can have certain hardware for a certain amount of years, and that's all you've got to work with. So you're kind of stuck. So if you grow, it gets tricky. So with the scalability in the cloud is great, because you can scale, click of a button, same day. Um, we do that for clients. If they want to you know, install a new server for whatever, great. Let's take a look, we'll install it, put it up there, you're good to go. And that can go up or down. So scaling can be, uh, you can increase, or if there's some things you don't use, you want to get rid of it, scale it down. Control, there's a lot of control with going to the cloud. Once again, um, I don't want to harp too much on all of these, uh, but really some of the more popular ones are just modernizing your GIS. Are, you, are there certain, you, technology's great. It's a, a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because it's, you know, there's constantly new things being, um, uh, put out there to improve processes, improve workflows. But at the same time, um, if your infrastructure can't support it, you can't take advantage of it. So modernizing your JS, the cloud offers that modernization. Um, you know, increased productivity, collaboration, automation, um, real how real-time data on demand. You know, the cloud provides that. Um, also, Clean house. If you are on, if you've been on premise for years with, and this is, this goes for anything. This doesn't even necessarily just GIS, but if you're on running any enterprise solution on premise and then you know it's full of bad data, old data, things that are just, you know that you don't want to clog this new environment up, you can clean house. Take this as an opportunity to clean up what you have and fill the new environment with the good stuff. So the, really the number one reason we find it's, it's to liberate GIS from the on-premise constraints, whether that's uh, within the departments or other departments that you work with, um, management, and once again, the infrastructure limitations. And so um, why managed services? So uh, we are a managed service provider. So Rock, we take ArcGIS Enterprise to the cloud, we deploy it, yeah, we'll architect it out for you, and then we manage it. So we manage that infrastructure and the software for you. So we do all the upgrades and the patches. That's what's great about a managed service provider. And we are not the only managed service provider, you know, uh, we're not the only player in this game. There's plenty, and there's a lot of great ones. Um, so the benefits of having a managed service provider is staff augmentation is really kind of the first one. Uh, many of our clients are smaller municipalities and they don't have the, you know, they don't have a large city to pull resources from. They don't have the ability to go and get all these, you know, college grads to come work at the, uh, the GIS office. So they may be more rural. The, we are a great fit for them. Um, managed services is a great fit for them because we can provide our services remotely. Um, so always supporting those if you have issues with staff and on you know, the past few years it's been tricky there's been a, sh a staffing shortage in every vertical I feel like every sector and in industry GIS is one of them so so modernize and expand GIS um, if you are uh, if, if your role in the organization is constantly um, you know let's say your your GIS um, um, your your focus is to create GIS applications and maps and really cool stuff for the public to consume, but most of your time is spent managing the infrastructure, you're not really doing what you want to do or what you should be doing. So this kind of frees up the ability, liberates you from that on-premise maintenance and management because we all know enterprise, GIS is complex. There's a lot of complexities and enterprise is no exception, it's a beast. So having, an organ having a company to come in and manage that for you allows you 
the free time to do the fun GIS stuff, right? Um, uh, uh, so for us, once again, just speaking of us, we know there's a lot of other managed service providers. We find that our clients, when they do go to the cloud, 75% of them expand their GIS footprint pretty substantially, um, faster than they ever could have had they stayed on premise because they were just so bogged down with maintaining everything on prem. So it really does liberate and it allows you to expand that GIS footprint. You know, create cool new stuff, create maps and things for the public to look at, or even internal uh, applications for your, your team to use. So the next I want to talk about who. Who is going to be included in this is big. When I, so my role at Rock is to, I'm kind of the first point of contact. So anybody, anyone that's interested in our services or just learning more about the cloud, cool. I'll walk you through that whole process. But one thing that's really key is making sure that if this is something that you're going to move forward with, involve everybody from the very first steps. Um, you don't want to loop in some of the, you know, the uh, stakeholders near the end, and uh, it just doesn't go well. So make sure that you are including those stakeholders. Uh, it'll pop up here in a minute. Um, you know, stakeholders, um, IT is a big one. Primarily, GIS um, comes to us. You know, anybody that works within the GIS departments, they typically reach out to us, but we are starting to see more and more IT reach out to us on behalf of their GIS because they don't want to manage it anymore. And they've heard that this is something that we can take off their plate. So, you know, looping them in is key as well. End users, people that are actually going to be using this product, loop them and keep them in, uh, get their inputs on this project um, or this evaluation because everybody has a say in these evaluations. Um, and then obviously the GIS. Um, th there are so many, each, each column here, they all have their own reasons why they need to be involved. Um, and so it really is important to have those conversations early internally with your team, then continue on that evaluation. So the what? So once you get to it, you, you kind of go through and you realize, okay, this is something we wanna, we wanna consider. Um, you loop in all the players, IT, GIS, end users, then you gotta identify, well, what are we gonna put in this cloud environment and what is it gonna look like? Um, and so it, everybody's GIS is different. And you know, I'll say that over and over again. There is no out of the box solution that really fits everybody. There isn't. It, the reality is everybody is a little bit different. So be a little wary of some of these, you know, one size fits all kind of packages because it just doesn't work that way. Uh, and with the cloud, you don't need to have a one size fits all. That's the reason of scalability. Um, but you know, considering, all right, what's gonna go in here? Look, enterprise content, you know, um, anything in your existing enterprise, portal, you know, any services you want to bring over into this new environment, great. ArcGIS Online, a lot of our uh, organizations or our clients kind of use a hybrid of ArcGIS Online and Enterprise. Enterprise is kind of the authoritative, create authoritative content, push it into ArcGIS Online for the public to consume, cool. So consider those things, imagery, old files, historical data, um, LiDAR, honestly anything. The cool thing about the cloud, storage is pretty cheap, relatively cheap, so you could bring all of it. Um, or once again, if you want to take this time to kind of clean house, you can definitely do that. But considering what's going to go into this environment, because what's going to go into it, it really does dictate how it gets architect on the back end. So, um, so things to consider. All right, um, so once again, cleaning the closet. This is a big one. Most organizations, they come to us and they say, we have Frankensteined a system over 15, 20 years. It is full of junk. We need to just start fresh. Not a problem. And, and that's great. We can. We can start fresh and they can start building new content, republishing or publishing new services in this environment. Um, it's a good way to sunset old bad habits, um, you know, outdated workflows. Once you go to the cloud, it's time to kind of start fresh. Um, and then new services. Um, 
you know, as you go along, upgrading to the latest, greatest version of Enterprise, I think uh, 11.1 is, I think, out, or if it's not, it's going to be out any day. Um, you know, take it, being able to take advantage of the new things that come along with the upgrades. Um, you know, if that's something you want to take advantage of, great. But make sure that what you're cleaning, um, I would say, be, take time when evaluating what does come over. Um, because the worth really is worth it. Or the worth is worth it. The work is worth it. All right, so where? So you've identified, you do want to go to the cloud. You've identified what's going to go to the cloud. You know who's going to be involved. Where is this going to go? Um, so there are uh, a handful of cloud providers out there, right? There's AWS is one of them. Uh, Google's got their own cloud. There's private cloud networks, Azure. So there's, um, there are uh, some options out there. There we go, the next one. Um, and really, here's how I'll put it. They're all very good, right? AWS and Azure, uh, primarily, I would say 65% of the market is within AWS. Azure is growing pretty substantially. They're very good. It's kind of like saying, well, let's, do I get a Ford or a Chevy? They're both great. They're going to give you very similar performance, very similar price. It's almost kind of, it's almost down to preference, to be honest. Um, every now and then, one will hold, you know, uh, you know, incentives to use their system, so they may offer some discounts. But end of the day, price-wise and performance-wise, the big players are very good and they're very comparable. So, once again, there are private clouds out there. Also, considering um, tenancy. So, this is um, whether or not it's going to be managed by your organization or if you want an outside vendor like Rock or another managed service provider to manage it for you. Um, that's something to consider. So going to the cloud is great. You got to make sure you have the resources that can manage a cloud infrastructure. Um, and once again, I think I, it was on the slide before, be very wary of a, if there's any sort of, uh, we'll just put you in a one size fits all kind of deployment that is run, because that is not, that is uh, highly recommended against. Um, and when? So when are you going to make this move? Timing is everything. Once again, we've had organizations that take years. Some, they can do it within a few weeks. You know, they, they're a small shop. They know, they're, they know what it takes to get something like this implemented. But just understanding a big part of this is budget. Um, if you... Um, are early in the phases you're considering this, take a look at what, what is it in the budget now? If it's not, is it something you'd want to put in the budget down the road? Um, and you know, getting proposals is all part of that. We recommend do your, do your due diligence, research, talk to vendors like us, get price quotes, um, and make sure that the staff is ready. You know, if you are going to require your team on premise to manage some of this, make sure that they are ready and they have the resources when you do go live. And plenty of time to test it um, and to train your team to onboard them. And then uh, I know we've uh, got about a minute left. This is just a brief uh, idea of typically what we see for a timeline. So an organization says, yep, we're ready to go. We're going to sign a contract. We're going to go to the cloud. From the day we kick that project off until they are officially live, it varies. The smaller, what we consider base deployments, four or five weeks from start to finish. Others, they can take months, sometimes years, depending on how big the deployment is. Um, but that's all part of knowing and gathering all the information you can to understand, is this feasible financially? And if it's not now, when will it be? And how? So there's a lot of resources out there. Um, and our, our website, it has loads of great information that you can uh, consume to consider. Uh, and it's, it's kind of agnostic. It's not necessarily just about rock, but it's, once again, thanks for the GIS community to consider when going to the cloud, because um, as you can see, there's lots to consider. We are a provider, so my job is to really hold your hand through that whole process and make sure that you have all of your I's are dotted, T's are crossed, and by the end of it, you have everything you need to make that evaluation. And if it makes sense for your organization, great. 
Um, if not, you gotta wait, no worries. Um, but there's lots of great resources that we have on the website. Um, so feel free to go to rocktech.net if you have any uh, interest. Uh, I think we're right there. Any, any questions? Yeah. That is a good question, and I wish I could answer it. <laughs> because um, I, I was not personally involved in the whole, so that, it's been a project, to answer, that's a great question. It's taken years. Um, so we actually have a, a team dedicated at Rock to the whole Kubernetes project. I wasn't on that, because it was just over my head, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but more information will be released. Um, it, it, it took a while. I'll, I'll say that. Um, and it's honestly, it's still ongoing. Um, we are certified specialists, but having said that, there's still some work with Kubernetes. Um, so we, we are, um, I know we've been on like a beta uh, with Esri, we've been on part of like a beta test partnership with Esri on the whole Kubernetes uh, for years. Um, I just am not involved on the day to day with it. So I, I don't know too much. It's been a while though, but I know we've partnered with Esri a lot. Um, outside of Esri, I'm not sure. I know AWS, um, we've definitely had plenty of conversations with them as well, um, but it's ongoing. So yeah, I'll get you more info and there's more to come. Um, and you have a booth, right? We do, yeah. Perfect, perfect, yeah. Good question though, yeah. Unfortunately, I'm the worst one to answer that. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? No, if not, great. Well, I appreciate the time. Uh, we have a booth, so feel free to swing by for some free trinkets and trash and stuff, and look forward to talking throughout the week.